formerly called the Shadow, and uh, I wish I could tell you the history of the name Shadow. Go ahead. Do you really want to know? How many people here believe the devil exists? Do you know it? If you're seated here tonight, if you come here tonight and you don't think the devil exists, you're in a lot of trouble. I'm telling you. When I tell people I was a satanist for 10 years and I don't believe it, that shows you how smart the devil is trying to be. When I started, when I first got engaged in the devil worshipping, that was back in 1993, the very first thing the devil told me was, rule number one, you don't know me, I don't know you. Rule number one, and that's how he keeps on hiding. That's how he comes around. I was, I was in, I was in uh, Sibira here. I used to have... Uh, allow me to share a story here. Allow me to share a story here. Um, I had, my girlfriend was in a box. So... <laughs> yes, Sharon. So this one day... By the way, because I was a Saturnist already, I'd started, about, I'd started in my S4 vacation. So by the time I came to campus, I'd already like gone to another level. So I had a roommate. He was called Jackson. I remember I put a spell on him that he left the room as soon as I entered it. He didn't know. For some reason, every time I entered the room, even if it was time for sleeping, he'd leave the room. So I remember this one day I was in... <laughs> okay, I was in room 133. Um... If anybody's sleeping in that room, it's safe, don't you worry. Um, I was in room 133. And I remember this one day when I, I was, I'd lit candles and I was going to do that satanic worship. I'd closed everything, closed the curtains. I'd forgotten that I'd given uh, my girlfriend a key to the room. So I'd started everything. And as I was getting into it, you know, I hear somebody, I'd started a meditation and somebody's opening the door. I jumped. And immediately I put a spell on her to forget what she had seen. I just reminded her recently, I said, do you remember a time when you walked in? I said, what? Do you remember a time when you walked into the room and you found candles? It's like, what? She just started trying to remember it. But you know that time I put a spell on her and she lost her memory at that particular moment. Listen, people. Listen. If you're here today, and let me, I'm not even going to hide this from you. Yes, there's some of you who are here right now. I have news for you. Your time is up. If you're here and you're Satanist, your time is up. Um, Pastor Senpai can say so many things. If I was given a night here, I would go up to three in the morning. But yeah. let me let you take control. They are, I think they are ready to stay up until three in the morning. Can you handle? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen, um, amen, amen, amen. Roger, let, let yes. me, maybe I can ask. Could you? How did you get involved? I really wanted to know. How did you get involved in Satanism? Okay. Like I said, it was in my S4 vacation. All of you, by the time you come to campus, of course, you've been through S4 vac, S6 vac. You know what it's like when you're idle at home and you're just doing nothing. You know what I'm talking about. You're looking for a job. You, you, you visit friends. You borrow all the movies there and you forget, you know. I reached that point where I got a bit tired. I said, okay, let me just go and start working on Kampala Road. I was working somewhere in Kampala Road and a gentleman came up to me and said, you know, I, I know you as a musician. I know you are somebody who likes music because I, I had a, I've had a history of music, entertainment, dance and things like that. You know, right from my P1, I've had that following me through and through. Now, in 1990, I got saved. But it was for three terms. I got saved in S, S1 first, second term, third term, and uh, S2 uh, first term. Then I backslid and, and got into those competitions, became Mr. Smart. And you know, it was all about dancing, dancing, modeling, dancing, and all like that. That's, that's where my whole life was centered. So this person comes up to me and says, you know something, you can even become a bigger star than what you are right now. I said, hey, really, really? Yeah, you want to become a star? You want to become like Michael Jackson? You want to go to Hollywood? Oh, I started hearing all these nice things. I said, what do I have to do? So I said, you see all these stars here are satanic worshippers. I said, what? I said, yeah, all these people who, who are famous, who are big stars, making a lot of money. You want to be like uh, Michael Jackson, Denzel Washington, Brad Pitt, or whoever. All the people you have on the posters in your rooms. By the way, I'll tell you something about posters in the rooms. I'll tell you what they do that you didn't know. And you walk away. you're going to walk away from here today when you have learned five new things from me. Five. And I promise you that. 
Now, at least five. So, <laughs> at least, by the way, we could go up to four in the morning. But anyway, um, so this, this, um, this guy, I won't say his name. I've actually decided to protect him from whatever because I hope that if I pray for him, he might change. So I will not character assassinate that, him. That's fine. He's still living. Mm -hmm. So he comes up to me and says, oh, you, you know, you could start worshipping the devil. First time I heard it, I was like, no, 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 no. Then he starts selling me his idea. He says, you see, you people misunderstand the devil. He's a nice guy. He's very understanding. You see all these guys who are rich. And he starts showing me. You know, I didn't realize at that moment I was going through what Jesus went through. I'll give you all these towns. I'll give you all these cities. I didn't realize that. I wasn't saying that. So he says, you see all these rich guys in town. All of them are satanists, by the way. You know, you start slowly. It's, it's a simple thing. So he tells me, let's go, start. I said, ah, no, I was very skeptical about the whole thing. Then he pushes me and says, no, you should, you should. One fine morning, I wake up, he comes, takes me to a room by force. Now, this was a strong room of a big shop on Kampala Road. I won't say which one. There's a strong room, like a safe where they keep money and, oh, you, you know, private documents, all the confidential documents. We get into the room and he says, now, we're going to talk to the devil. But uh, it's a simple thing. Don't worry. I said, hey, you sure he's not going to come and jump and just, you know, start strangling and cutting off our necks and all that? He said, no, he's a nice guy. So I said, okay, let's meet this nice guy. He switches off the lights and my goodness, you haven't seen darkness like that room. It was pitch black. I could not even see my hand. It was that dark. Now I'm in the room standing. At Please allow me to stand. I was in the room and... This man is moving around. He says, okay, now let's start talking to the devil. And he starts, he kept quiet. Instead of talking, he kept quiet. So I start to call his name because I couldn't even see where I was. I call his name. Let me use the name Sempa, if you don't mind. That's all right. <laughs> so I said, Sempa, Sempa, where are you? And he answers from somewhere there. So because it was dark, I just kept moving like this. When I reach here, I'm like, eh, Sempa, where are you? And he answers from back there. So I walk in the darkness. I continue. Where are you? Where are you? I reach here and he's talking right behind there. Then I knew something was wrong. It's like, ha. Huh, I've got myself into something I can't get. I didn't realize then that I got myself into something that I could not come out of. Once you get into satanic worship, it is a lock. It locks you completely. The only person who can bring you out of it is somebody who's praying for you. That's the only person who can bring, it out, uh, bring you out of it. Or... Oh, God himself can take you out of it. When I tell people my story, they don't believe it. I really don't care. I really don't care whether you believe me or not. I know where I came from. I know what I went through. I was just like anybody. As for vacation, I'm experimenting. Pa, I landed into devil worship. My dear. Those 10 years. <laughs> How did it me, evolve just... from, from that stage to another stage? Um, like I said, after, after that experience that guy disappeared i never saw him again for a very long time the last time i saw him was actually at miss mccary and i looked at him and i was like my 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 this man is at work now what is he trying to do <laughs> and he found me at a time when i was in prayer and i just prayed i said i want this man to leave this place right now you mean this this he this, this recent... Yes, 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 yes. I was the MC. At Munyonyo. Yes, he, I was the he, MC. He was there. I saw him. Oh. I saw him and I looked and I said, what is going on here? Wow. And I said, I'm, I came here. I didn't come here in my own... I, I didn't come here in my own capacity. I came here in the authority given to me by Jesus Christ. And I didn't... I, I wasn't afraid of anybody. I said, okay. I don't care whether you've brought the devil and all the people that he comes with to come and hit me. I'm going to stand here and no weapons formed against me shall prosper. Yeah. You know, Roger, what was interesting was uh, I was just reading in the papers, you know, how after you were told people about two in the morning, I think they said, you guys, I have to retire. I have to go to church tomorrow. And as soon as you left, Atembui, the rain began to fall. You know, uh, let me make a quick comment about that. Uh -huh. It was not a coincidence that it started raining. Mm. I will tell you this as a testimony. You can choose to believe my story or not to believe. I'm not here to force anybody to believe me. Trust me. What I'm telling you is what I've gone through. This is a personal experience. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not going to get money out of convincing you into anything. 
I don't get any money out of it. I just come here because I know somebody rescued me from death. That's why I'm here. So I'll tell you what happened that day. First of all, I get saved and everybody tells me, um, when, when they first contacted me to host Miss McCary, I was like, hey, why am I being called to Miss McCary? So I prayed to God about it. I said, you know, advise me. Should I go and do this thing or should I forget about it? And, and he reminded me my calling. He reminded me, he said, yes, I'm going, you know, the reason why I called you is because you had misled my people and I'm using you to bring the same people back. So I realized, I said, okay, so where do I start from? He said, now, do you want me to send your pastor to go there and reach at a, a beauty contest? You're the one who's going to go there. So he gave me some instructions. He told me, now you get some people who are going to be praying with you when you go there. Secondly, I'll tell you some secrets here, some things you can go and tell your friends. I, I hope... They're not journalists here, but if they're here, I hope you don't twist my words, which you have been doing so well lately. They've been playing with my words, I'm like... Bind your red paper. Uh, and all those spirits, we <laughs> bind you in the name of and Jesus. And we forgive them in the name of Jesus. They... So, what happened is, I went with two intercessors. And I stood there, and I was just listening to instruction from God. I just stood there, and pe people must have thought I was mad. Because you, know you, <laughs> you know, when you work for God, people will start thinking you're mad. I'm telling you. But that's because they don't know the devil exists. Only God tells you what to do. So I'm at the uh, Munyonyo, and the Spirit of God instructs me to touch any part of the stage and pray. So what I did is I just held on a metal and I started praying. I closed my eyes and I started praying. People just show, saw me uh, shaking my head. And I was shaking my head like this and I was praying. And the instruction was very clear. I said, nobody who's planning to destroy people's minds here, anybody who comes here in the name of Satan will not step on this stage. And anybody who comes here in the name of Satan and accidentally gets on this stage will leave this place mad. That was the instruction. Very clear. I will tell you. Evidence. So, uh, the ceremony continues. I mean, this, after, after I prayed, I went back home to change and get ready for the, that function. A lot of born-again Christians came up to me and said, but Brother Roger, you've just got saved. Now you're going back into beauty contests. What is wrong with you? And I said, now you know. And we talked about this one. Then I said, yeah. I think it's, you, you should go ahead. Yeah. I didn't yeah. see a, an objection there. Yeah, a lot of people were telling me, now you've just, you just become saved. The devil is now going to attack you from that point. My dear, I was on instruction. I was on instruction from an authority who, discovered, or who, who saved me from a very bad situation. So I said, okay, I will do as you please. Um, we went for that beauty contest. I remember standing on that stage and people were shouting all kinds of insults, but they didn't realize what was going on in my heart. At that particular moment, you people, you don't know what was going through my mind. I had, there was meditation going on. People don't believe in God, but I'll tell you, he does exist. And you can talk to him. The whole purpose, if you remember very well in Genesis, God used to come and com used to go to the garden and talk to Adam. Adam. They used to have a conversation. That is the kind of relationship God wants to have with us, but we don't want to have that relationship with him. So I stood there and I was conversing with God and people didn't realize. I was standing there and saying, next contestant is contestant number three. The contestant gets on stage and I say, God, these are so many people. Then he would answer back. At one point, somebody howled an insult at me that sort of became painful. I said, God, that was very painful. <laughs> and he says, he says to me, look up. So I look up in the sky. And he says, that's my foot. And I started laughing. I was on stage and I was laughing. So I remember, if you ask my, anybody who was at that event, you remember these events very well. So somebody asked me from the audience, why are you smiling? Why is it that you're doing all these things? I said, my dear, you don't know what it's like to live with Jesus. You will not understand what I'm going through unless you know him. I walked with the devil for 10 years, my dear. 10 years. <laughs> or you want to know how he looks like? First of all, First of all, let me tell you something about the devil. He says, now, rule number one, you don't know me, I don't know you. So he will appear to you in different forms. But when we used to go into the underground, yes, R Roger, yes. Roger, <laughs> don't let that guy sidetrack you. I know they want, they are going to have many questions. Okay. But finish up that point. Miss McCary. Miss McCary and the rain. Thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> thanks for bringing me back on track. Uh, Miss McCary, so, during the whole time, me, I was having a conversation with God. Actually, I was in prayer, and people didn't realize. I saw a picture in the red paper where they're trying to portray me as though I was looking at somebody's eyes. I wasn't even thinking about I didn't even know the girls who were contesting, by the way. 
Me, I was just there on a different mission. The whole time I'd get a, I'd get a break, I'd throw in a word for God. I'd say, by the way, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Every time I got a break, Jesus loves you. Sometimes you tell me things to say. Because, you know, as a man, I can't choose my own words. You know, there's certain things you can't talk about God unless he has told you. And you know that. You all know that. So, <laughs> I remember Bobby Wine stepped on stage. You all know Bobby Wine. He stepped on stage. He could even be here. One of you could be the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He stepped on stage and uh, he almost ran mad when he left the stage with his songs incomplete. He went backstage and he was throwing tantrums. But the whole time he was throwing tantrums, I knew what was happening to him. I was like, man, you shouldn't have stepped on that stage. That's what I was saying. You shouldn't have stepped on that stage. You remember that show was being advertised heavily with the Ogopa DJs coming all the way from Nairobi? Did they ever step on stage? Did they? Did Chameleon step on stage? Did Baby Cool step on stage? Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. I don't make those decisions. If you have a doubt and you don't believe in me, after I had finished the words that I was supposed to say at that beauty contest, God told me to stop right there. He said, you finished your part. He said, you finished your part? I said, okay. He said, what do I have to do? He said, now you can go. So I told the people, um, sorry, I have to go. I'm to church tomorrow. Um, this, you know, thanks for the invitation. I said so many other things, pleasantries. And I left. And then, you know, God just told me it's finished. You can go home now. I said, okay, fine. Thank you. And I was walking home. I get in the car and it starts raining. I was like, you guy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just sat around and said, you guy, you know, a and people didn't understand it. Me, I understood it. I was like, okay, you made your point. You made your point. Some people don't see these things. They just don't want to see. But Jesus says, if you have eyes, if you have ears, that was Miss McCary for you. Amen. Shall we give the Lord If you don't believe what's happening. You know. The world in which you and I live in is, is, is got rules, magnets that are moving things on top. You see Bobby Wine go this way and you don't know why he's going the other way. But there's a magnet beneath. And it's either Jesus or the devil. Or there, there, there is no middle ground. Um, I'm going to ask about your salvation. How, how did... Huh? Okay, just a moment. I, I know you want to find out about the underground. I'll tell you about it. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you about you, it. But I, I want to know, number one, is how did you come out of Satan's service? If you would make that, I mean, briefly, I want to bring you back. We're going to bring Roger back. And, and we're going to have, excuse me, we have to do everything with order. I'd like to hear from these ladies also today and this brother here. I want to hear, how did you come out of, of Satan's service? Well, first of all, when you get into it, you can't come out of it. Even when you just get a thought that I want to leave, the devil will strike you. Just a thought. Sometimes I'd be very miserable and I'm like, can somebody help me out of this? You know, some of you guys don't realize that there are people in this country who have sacrificed others for favors from the devil. Sometimes you hear somebody went missing. I've seen some pictures in Bukete where you say, and what's in, the, what's in the cave that is the head of a human being? You wonder what was they doing? These things are not new. They're not strange. These are things that happen in our day-to-day -day life. As I speak right now, there must be some Satanists who are seated and floating somewhere and trying to find their way in Lake Victoria to go down to that city. There's a serpent that sits in Lake Victoria. I'll tell you more about her. But let's... Um, you asked me a question. Let me go back to the question. Salvation. How did you come out of, out of Satan's service? We want to know and give glory to God. How did he rescue you out of that power where you never live? It looks like it's a city that no one lives. How did you become a survivor? First, I'd like to give glory to God for that. The fact that I'm out of it, I give glory to God. Now, I'll tell you my experience. 
People can write whatever they want to write in a newspaper. People can say whatever they want to say. You're going to hear it from me firsthand, and it's up to you to decide whether to believe me or the newspaper. It's really up to you. This is my story. Now, I'd already started doing a lot of work for the devil. Um, it, there's really a long gap from the time, from, from 1993 to 96 when I started working in Sanyu FM to, 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 to uh, 2000 when we started Shadows Angels up to the last minutes. Let me start from the point, since you want, to see, uh, you want to know how I came to the salvation, let me start from Shadows Angels a bit. I hope another day, you, I hope you invite me another day and I'll tell you the whole story. But, but let me start from Shadows Angels. So the devil gives me an assignment. I go to London, air ticket paid for, 10 million shillings on just cash money to spend. Everything paid for. I never struggled with a visa. I never struggled with anything. I just knew when my flight was, I traveled to UK. So I meet the devil in a, those of you who have been to London, you've heard of a town called Soho. It's right in central London. Central London, it's a place called Soho. So I meet the devil there and he tells me, I want you to start something like this. He takes me to one of the strip clubs there. He says, I want you to go and start this in Uganda. So I'm watching, 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 and I said, hey, but where are huh? these, these, these are Bazungu, they can manage. Where are you going to get a Ugandan girl who can do this? I said, we'll get them. You won't look for them, I'll bring them to you. So I asked where the costumes. He told me, you, get, you know, you also get the costumes. Then as I realized how the system works, it's very easy, for example, in a country like UK where they have newspapers, like Daily Star, Sunday, whatever, Sunday, I've forgotten the newspaper. Sunday Mirror, yeah. They put pictures of naked women and uh, yeah, pornographic pictures, really. A bit like red paper. A lot like red paper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A lot. So, so I, I told the devil, what? What? This thing works hand in hand. You know, you cannot get people like this and you're not promoting them. So he said, um, we need a newspaper like this. I said, don't worry, I'm working on it. That's what he told me. So that, that is 2000. And, th and that was before Red Paper came, eh? I'm bringing the story. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing the story. I don't want to use this as a biased story. I, did not come to, I don't benefit anything coming here and lying to you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't drive from wherever I've come from to come and stand before you and lie to you. I'm telling you my life story. You either believe it or you don't believe it. It's really up to you. There's no cash prize here. So I tell the devil... You know, this is going to be impossible. It tells me, don't worry, we recruit. These people will tell you that I did not look for any one of them. They came to me. There was only one person who I had to persuade, and that's Ethel over there. That's the one person I had to persuade, and that was on instruction from the devil. Why? Because she has a background of born-again people, a whole family. So that was the isolation. I said, that one you have to recruit. But the rest came to me on instruction. So I come down here. Um, this was March, no, 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 yeah, this was March 2001. March 2001, Shadows Angels started in, uh, the whole concept started around two th uh, December 31st, 2000. So I travel in February 2001, I come back here in March. I came back on March 8th, I remember it was Women's Day and the elections were going to take place. So I come down here and the devil tells me, start work. I start looking for the girls. I'm like, hey, where are the girls going to come from? The girls started coming to me. So where do I find them? Go to the clubs. I go to the clubs. I just tell them, listen, I think you'd be a good dancer. Come and make a lot of money. I think I'm going, I'm going to make you a star. Follow me. It was like finding disciples. <laughs> yes, it was that kind of experience. The devil also makes disciples. <laughs> oh, he's very good at that. He always copies everything that God does, by the way. He loves to copy. So... We get these people, they start dancing, and I explain to them. I said, now listen, everybody's going to yell at you, but this is what you're going to do. You're going to put on skimpy outfits. Meanwhile, I'm putting spells on them. These girls could stand before anybody in anything as skimpy as a G-string and not feel naked. That's how spell-bound they were. They could just easily come here and stand before you and dance because they didn't know what I'd put on them. They never gave me spells that I put on them. And for them, they, they wondered why people were making such a big deal. They like, what's wrong with you? It's just a G-string. <laughs> and you're saying, what? Are you crazy? You know, that's what spell, that, this is what they, this, these are things they call principalities. And strongholds. Chain. You're chained. So, I come back here, we start this group. I remember about two, three months later, 
the management of Red Pepper started looking for me. I know they will deny, they will deny that today. But if any one of you is a witness, you remember that there was not a single issue that went by without Shadow's Angels. Do you agree with me? There was always a story. Shadow's Angels don't wear knickers. Shadow's Angels don't do this. Shadow has done this and that. DJ Shadow has done this and that and that. When I got saved, they started hammering me. But before that, they were not saying a single thing. I can stand before you here. I know some of you may be here and you're going to tell the stories and they're going to start attacking me and right and right and right. I really don't care. I'll tell you. I used to walk into the Red Pepper offices here on Bombo Road. And I'd just sit on any computer and start typing a story and I walk out. That's how much power I had in that area. And some people started even thinking I had shares there. Connections. You will see them by the fruits that they bear. You, re you open the magazine and you ask, what have I learned from this newspaper today? I have learned Kandahar. I have learned that a G-string can be like this. I have learned that if you bomb, if there are two missiles and blah, 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 and all that, and that's what you have learned in one single day, plus all the lies that I said under gossip. So I just read in a recent issue that I'm recruiting girls for all saints. That's not true. I've spent this whole week. I don't want to say these things, but I've spent this whole week trying to find my God. I've been praying and fasting, and somebody tells me I've been looking for girls. I looked and I said, my, you people find some. I even called, I called uh, Rugendo. He's one of the people there. I called him. I said, listen, if you have nothing to write, don't write it. Leave me alone. Listen, I give my life to Christ. Forget Amina. me. Forget me. Leave me alone. Forget me. Hallelujah. Story. They wrote another story of how I used to, how we used to have eight girls in the same bed. I said, and I have a camera in, on my ceiling. My, my roof, my roof is concrete. My bed is so small. It's a six by five. It can't handle three people. But, uh, but you know, uh, Roger. <laughs> and you, I'm just giving you examples. You, you and I have, have been victims. Past, pastor, you've been in my house, actually. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, three days ago, house. you were in my house. What Red Paper usually writes is usually lies and character assassination things. But you know, they target people who love Jesus. Roger, like pastor Semba. Roger was never a bad guy until, until I got, got saved. saved. That is when they began. If you think I'm lying to you, go and look at all the past issues and watch from the time when I said I'm saved. Then they start all these things. Shadow dictation. Eight girls in the same room. I even went there to them and said, you know what? I forgive you because my God tells me to forgive you. You have lied about me, but I forgive you. And I told them, listen, I, mean, I just uh, want you to write and tell this and tell the truth as it is. So they asked me, so where are the girls now? I said, yes, they live in my house. We live together and we fellowship together. How do they write the story? I still sleep with six girls in a communion of saints. People, let me tell you a personal secret. Let me tell you a personal secret. From the time Jesus visited me, I have not had sexual, uh, sexual relations. I have not. It used to be an addiction. Well, as a satanist, it used to be an addiction. I have not. Roger, once you stayed in the light, some of those people can't Oh, sorry. Yeah, if you could stay <laughs> in the light. That I, I also like to see a bit farther. Yeah. But anyway, you asked me how did I get into salvation. Mm. So what happens is Shadow's Angel starts and, you know, it booms and we start doing all those things. Mm. By the way, if you ever attended any Shadow's Angel show, I'm sorry, we cast you. We put four spells on you. Four spells. One of them is poverty. Poverty. If you're here and you don't have Jesus in your life and you watch that show, watch it. It's coming your way. You need salvation. Two. Two. If you are married, it was an automatic divorce for you. You may think I'm lying to you. Let me give you an example. One of our richest sponsors during that time came to me recently. He came to Capital Radio and asked me for 20,000 shillings. This is somebody who, used, who I used to go to and say, I need a million shillings. And he says, come for it. It's on my desk. I say, I, need, I want to go out this weekend. He gives me 700,000. He, he, he came to Capital and asked me for 20,000 shillings. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? I'm not going to give you 20,000 shillings. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. Because I know what I did to your life. And I'm going to undo everything that I did in the name of Jesus. You see, people, listen to me. I'm, I'm actually crying out to you right now. I'm crying out to you. 
from the depth of my heart. The biggest lie the devil is telling right now. I know some of you certainly are here and you're beginning to, you're beginning to call him now and say, come and, come and check this guy and check what he's saying. Whatever, I don't care. Let me tell you. They are here. What the devil does is he fronts other people. He doesn't want you to know he exists. That's why when people start talking about the devil, people look at you and say, are you okay? It's cuckoo. Yeah, you, can you, are you on medication? Mm. You know? What was the fourth spell? <laughs> third. What was the third? There, were, there were four spells. Mm. I mentioned poverty. Mm. I mentioned divorce. Mm. Divorce. Now there were two more. Mm. The, very first, the, the very third one was that of... Um, no, I mentioned poverty. Mm. Wait, 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 something here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Take your time. No, I need to remember this. I need to remember this because there are many. There are many. Just remind me. Jezebel. Jezebel. Oh, thank you. Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel makes you an alcoholic. Makes you the horniest person standing wherever you are. Slow down. Uh, the makes you what? The horniest person. An alcoholic and then the other? Horniest. Horny person. What, which means that you are interested in sex all the time. That is what happened to you when you watched any of our shows. And most of you know it. Men would walk out like this. <laughs> Do you know that? Facts. Facts. I came to give you facts today. I came to give you facts today. I was trying to remember the Jezebel thing and mm. it was keeping my mind. The fourth one was, uh, I, need, I need you to remind me a bit. Those uh, Jezebel, poverty, um, divorce. divorce, divorce, and a fourth one. Oh, curse, bad calamity. Calamity, if you traveled, if you watched our show today and you traveled the next day, you'd go home and only find bad news. Car accident, somebody has died, come for burial. Do this, your child has been dismissed from hospital, school fees, all those problems that come around. Now, so you'd leave. What, what was the intention of, of this? This is, I mean, people have come to watch you. Yes. And they, they are even giving you. <laughs> They've even paid mon money. Money. And then you are giving them bad things. Why? Why? Ah, devil, I hate the devil. <laughs> <laughs> well, biblically, the Bible only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil is the only person who doesn't know what it's like to be a man. Jesus knows. <laughs> Do you understand me? So he doesn't really care about you. I'll say that again. The devil is the only person who doesn't know what it's like to be a man. <laughs> okay. I want to move into your salvation. Right. Mm. So, so we're doing all those things and casting all these spells. Now the whole time we're doing it, I kept giving the girls instructions. Now, this whole thing we're doing called punishment and all that was just blasphemy. People did, if, if somebody had brains at that time, would have understood that punishment is for the wicked. Wasn't it? That's how it's written in the Bible. The wicked will be... So we used to have punishment. Make people sit on the chair. Make, put their hands behind. Tell them to close their eyes. Don't touch. Don't do this. And the girls will jump all over them and put spells on them. I would like to follow the, life, the lives of all the people who participated in that thing because I think right now they're in trouble and they need help. You don't know what the devil does. You don't know what the devil does. I'd like to tell you a story. No, but before I do so, let me complete um, your question. So as I continue working with the devil, then he tells me, this is 2002, last year, 2002 around May, after I just recruited uh, Ethel. He tells me now I want to take it to another level, but before I do so, I want you to sleep with your mother. I did not travel from wherever I have been to come and stand before you and lie to you. I have nothing to gain. I'm not going to get money from you. No, we don't think you are lying. We're just shocked at what the devil what I am wants, telling you. wants to do. Oh, that was even nothing. That was just one alternative. <laughs> because I said, uh, uh that's impossible. By the way, I used to call him Papa. <laughs> that was the name he told me to call him. What? Papa. Papa, yes. Find you, devil. So, 
I said, Papa, you have a problem now. And I said, give me another alternative. That one is a bit too hard. He told me, kill your parents. <laughs> I said, no. Don't give me an alternative that is harder than the last one. Now, he knew that, at that time, he knew that uh, my girlfriend was expecting, so he told me to kill the baby. He said, kill the baby. I was like, man, you've given me three very difficult alternatives. So I started giving it a break. I was like, ah. I stopped doing those chants. I stopped lighting candles. I, stopped, I started you know, trying to keep myself busy. During that period, I used to get drunk a lot. Those of you who used to go to Club Silk, you must have seen me a lot on the counters. I was very stressed. Because I was thinking, I said, I can't do these things. How do I come out of this? What am I going to do? Nobody knows. My mother doesn't know I got into this thing. I can't even explain to anybody. If I walk to anybody and say, listen, I'm a devil worshiper, they will start laughing in my face. Mm. So I said, God, what do... <sighs> I was stressed. I started drinking myself stupid. Then he started making the Shadows Angels business collapse. Reminding me that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. More people started coming to me collecting money. Debts, 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 debts. My landlord started pressurizing me. The devil was reminding me that you have some decisions to make. It's like, ah, let me first wait. So he fell out with me for a while. Even my powers started, the powers he had given me started for... Uh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. One of the guys, we, we couldn't bring him here, but he would have testified right here. I used to drive to my home. Pastor Senpai, you saw my place? You know where the gate is? Mm -hmm. You saw the distance from my gate mm -hmm. to the floor upstairs? Mm -hmm. Now there's a downstairs place. Now downstairs, one of, the, one of the guys called Zach would be sleeping and I'd park at the gate and I'd jump out of my body and go into his dream and tell him to come and open the gate and jump back into my body. You don't believe that, but if he was here, he'd tell you. The boy would wake up in either an underwear, boxer shorts or whatever and walk to the gate like this. <laughs> open the gate and after opening the gate, he waits for me to drive in everything, blah, 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 blah. He closes the gate and goes back like this in his sleep. These are the kind of satanic powers I'm talking about. Mm, astro projection. Astro projection. So, <laughs> I started falling out with the devil. He started complaining with. Uh, around two, um, December 31st, we're in Bali. And I was, asking, I was asking myself whether, you know, 2003, whether I would make it through 2003. It's like 2003. I really see the devil killing me because he had killed, he'd killed about three of my friends who are working with me as satanic agents. So I knew I was next in a car accident. In fact, these people will tell you I used to be paranoid. Whenever we're in a car, I'd make somebody sit next to the driver to keep him awake. Because I knew the devil would plot something in a car accident. So I was always watchful. I was always paranoid. These people would sleep after a show. Me, I would not sleep when I was in a car. I was like, mm -mm, you don't catch me sleeping, my friend. You know, I am awake. So we come back from Bali. My powers now start reducing. Some of those things that I used to do, astral projection, enter the bathtub and you disappear. I would be in two places at the same time. I would be in my bedroom and I would be in Club Silk. People didn't know those things. You don't believe me? It does happen. They will, they will testify. You know? You'd be in two places at the same time. And people don't know that. Those are satanic powers. So, I, I started noticing that some of those powers had started going. Then I knew now the devil really wants me to go and sleep with my mom, to kill my parents, or to kill the baby. January 18th, 2003, I'm talking about this year. I ask, I call my place of work and I tell them I'm sick, I need to go, I need to take a break. This was a Thursday and Friday. I traveled to Ginger to go and upgrade myself spiritually. Yeah. What do you mean by that? To go and talk to the devil so that he gives me back my powers. In ginger, yes. Why oh, ginger? Why is it shocking you? Let me explain some things to you. Uh, will you allow me to explain? Go ahead. The devil was thrown from heaven. He came down. Lucifer came down with a third of the angels in heaven that he had contaminated. He came down in four horns. I was actually sharing that with Pastor. He came down in four horns. Tigris, Euphrates, the two rivers end up in, re in which lake? Persia. They go through Iraq. They end up in Persia. The third lake, I mean the third river is the river Nile. The river Nile ends in which lake? Before Lake Victoria was called Lake Victoria, it used to have a name. What was the name? 
Nalubare means mother what? Serpent. It's mother serpent. Do this thing shock you? Nalubare. <laughs> <laughs> Do these things shock you? These things are there. You go and ask your grandfathers. You go and say, These people have been devil worshipping for, for generation and generation. But I'll tell you something. The founders of this country made one big mistake. They made a covenant with God and they said, For God and my country. That one mistake they made is what is causing God to make this visitation that he's making. And whoever is in satanic worship, whoever says, Whoever then they start cutting those things. Some of you have been exposed and made gateways for the devil. They cut you three times and they say, they're putting medicine in you. They've made you a gateway. So you start asking yourself, what is wrong with our nightwe? The guy has nothing wrong. What is wrong with Connie? The guy has nothing wrong with him. It's what his parents did to him. I'm not trying to blame anybody today. I'm just trying to tell you about the devil's existence. Mm. So I fall out with the devil mm. and you went to Ginger. Ginger. To I go to pray. River Nile. Mm -hmm. The serpent that sits in Lake Victoria has gatekeepers at Bujagari. They stand as gatekeepers. You don't just go there. You all know the stories of Bujagari. I don't have to tell you. The, the man who walks on water. You know that if you fall in the river, mm -hmm. nobody can pick your body except somebody who has a spirit of Bujagari. I told them. You know that. Mm -hmm. You know that. In case you didn't know. So I go to Ginger. And I was saying, now I'm going to strike a deal. I'll either talk to these gatekeepers and they start telling me things. What have I done? They explain to me what I've done to the devil. And whether he can give me other alternatives. <laughs> I left that place. I left Ginger. And that week, I went with a friend of mine. He's called Amon. If you think I'm lying, go and ask him. He's, a he's Juliana's boyfriend. Evidence. Please don't hassle him. He's not, yet, he's not yet born again. But you can go and ask him. For him, he didn't know why he was going with me. And he also doesn't know why we used his car to go there. It's just now that I got saved and I explained to him and he's like, my goodness. He was shocked. So I go there, I thought I was upgrading, I come out of it. <laughs> and the devil struck me that week, badly. I started vomiting blood. Heavy blood. I went to AAR, you can go and check my medical records. They tested for everything, there was nothing. I was vomiting blood. I actually... I lost so, so, so much weight during that period. So much. Right now, I'm even trying to recover. I was vomiting so much. You, you know there's blood that is mixed with water. These people were even here. Some of them came to the hospital. Amon is one of those people who will be my witness. He one time came home, and he was still talking to me. I vomited blood. He jumped and said, you are going to die. I said, man, I don't know what is happening to me. The doctors looked at me, and they said, now, we don't know what to do for you. My mother started panicking. You know how moms are like, test for everything. Test for this. Test for that. Test. They tested for everything there was to test. They're like, You know how mothers panic. Then I knew. Me, I knew. It's like, now the devil is really taking me out. I said, this is how I'm going to die. I'm like, oh my, 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 my. What a terrible thing to enter hell this way. Nobody could rescue me. I couldn't. I couldn't even speak because I knew then he, was, he would start strangling me. There is one of the girls who left Shadows Angels. I, Red Pepper wrote their own story, but the real story was that she was beginning to get those strangulations, demonic strangulations. These people were there. They're my witnesses. They will tell you what was happening to her. The girl would start falling down, and she would say, leave me alone, leave me alone. And she's kicking, 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 kicking. And me, I will just stand there, and I'm making that. I'm in the attack, but I'm standing here. I will jump out of my body and join in the attack of strangling her. But I'm standing there saying, it's okay, you'll be fine, you're okay, it's all right, it's okay. Listen, listen, these people are looking at me as a humble person who's saying, it's okay. Yet I'm actually not even in my body anymore. I'm there strangling her. I say, die, die. That's how demonic I was, my dear. I don't know. The other things I can't tell you now, they will shock you. So, salvation comes from here. Mm -hmm. This is where the salvation comes in. That was January 18th, 19th. Um, I jump out of hospital. I go back in hospital again. Because we went to AAR. AAR, they said, we don't know what's wrong with you. So I leave and we try another doctor. We go to Joda Clinic. Dr. Tor, you can go there and ask him evidence. So Dr. Tor looks at me and says, maybe it is some kind of complicated ulcers. Because blood, 
Hey, you know, doctors, they always have an explanation. I think those ulcers, it could have, you know, one of those peptic ulcers. You know, he explained something and my mom was like, yeah, I think this doctor knows what he's doing. <laughs> so they start medication, medication, medication. Meanwhile, I'm not working. And I'm like, hey, man, the hospital bill go to about 700,000 on just drip and drip and drip because I couldn't eat anything. There's blood just coming out of me. But me, I knew what, I knew what was happening. The devil was strangling me and trying to take, take me. One fine day after I walked out of hospital, I walked back home. Um, when I go home, I said, now I'm going to make peace with the devil. I said, okay, this guy wants to kill me. Let's make peace. So I, you know, get ready for meditation and all those things. I set up, set up, set up. I just come back from work at Capital Radio. Go home, it's about half past midnight. And I start calling his name. I call him, I call him, I call him. He's not responding. Call him, call him, call him. He's not responding. <laughs> yes, that, Papa. Yeah. Papa was not coming. I don't, I don't advise you to use those names. Don't say things you won't understand. You don't know what they might do to you. So I'm chanting, chanting the names, chanting the names. The man is not responding. I even start giving him his praises because he, he has some things that he loves those praises. He loves to be called the most high. I'm telling you. <laughs> the devil likes being called the most high. Which is true, actually. He's high all the time. If you know what I mean. He's high on... Drugs. He's high on his stupidity. So, I start calling out, chanting, 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 no response. There was a voice, you know, for 10 years, I'd been talking to the devil. There was a voice that came that day that was different from all the voices I'd been talking to for the 10 years I was doing devil worshipping. And it just said, stop what you're doing. I said, what? Stop what you're doing. You have misled my people for a long time, and I'm going to use you to take them back. So I ask immediately, who are you? Because in the spirit world, the spirits introduce themselves. Who are you? I'm Shadow. Who are you? I'm Lazmas. Who are you? I'm so and so. Who are you? I'm so and so. So you get those names. So I asked, who are you? I, for a moment, I thought the devil was pulling a trick on me. I said, ha, ah, now he's using this one as a trick to find out whether I'm planning to escape and he hammers me properly. Find no touch. <laughs> so this is a trick. So I asked, who are you? There was a silence and I was actually expecting a beating. So I started looking around. I knew the devil can hit you with anything. He can hit you with a wall hanging that is in your living room and people come and find your body there. And they say, oh, why your food de chi? They look at you and even the post-mortem cannot explain what happened to you. That's how the devil kills. So I was there expecting something. But meanwhile, there was that intense electricity that was coming down on me. Intense. I started sweating. So I look around the room and I'm like, who are you? And man, believe it or not, the voice replies, I am the living God. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That, that, listen to me, that started to change my life immediately start that's where the, the you know i was like okay so what do you want me to do then he started telling me so many things switch on your tv in my i have a small t i had a small um, tv in my bedroom that i used to use you know because i'd connect mna to those ends and then to my bedroom and then i had that small tv so i'd like watch all these blah 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 all the things on the on a dstv for some funny reason that day I switch on the TV and there's LTV and uh, Pastor uh, Benny Hinn is saying, what God is telling you. I almost jumped. I was like, these guys have planned these things now. What God is telling you. And he started explaining to me. And I, I said, now this man is actually talking to me? You know, I lay down on the bed and I was on the TV until four in the morning. Meanwhile, the whole night I'm getting instructions. God told me, you go and tell those people what you've been doing. I said, oh. <laughs> Wh Which people were those? <laughs> the former angels. These ones. He said, you go and tell them what you've been doing. I said, ha. Oh. God. <laughs> that is a bit of a trick. One of the girls is not here. She's called Evelyn. Two weeks from that time, I was supposed to sacrifice her. What I do you said, mean sacrifice her? In its real sense. Human sacrifice. 
The devil had told you to go Where? and sacrifice. He wanted her blood. Wow. Why? So I, I started thinking, I said, God, you're telling me to go and tell that girl that I was going to kill you in two weeks? I was saying, now, you know, these people are really going to kill me today. He said, you go and tell them. People don't believe that story. But I'm telling you, that's exactly what happened. And he told me, you go. I will do the talking. So I brave courage, I, you know, I braved up, called them. They were wondering, what am I going to tell them? Gathered them in the sitting room. I said, now, what I'm going to tell you is going to shock you for the rest of your lives. I took another 30 minutes before I could talk. I said, now, how do I start this thing telling them that devil worship? Are they all going to look at me and say, what? Somehow God gave me the courage and I told them. I've been a satanist for 10 years. I've been a devil worshiper and I've been using all of you. You're working for the devil. But you didn't know. I was an active agent, you were passive agents. You didn't know you were like pawns on a chessboard. I was the king and queen. You, you were the pawns, the ones that are fronted. Those of you who play chess, you know what I'm talking about. You are the pawns. You don't know what you're doing. You're the people who be fronted all the time. They looked at me in shock. Actually, at that moment, I was expecting a beating. So I started doing this. So that's what I had to tell you. As me, I was looking for the quickest, ex quickest exit. <laughs> then you now... Roger, yes, l l let me ask Ethel, what was your response when he told this to you? I was very shocked because a person like Roger, we didn't expect it. But 